Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Rick Abusing the Microscope. Um, in this little demonstration, and no, I'm not going to get on camera, I look terrible. Um, <laughs> uh, I would like to try to give some idea of the general quality of the Amscope microscopes. I've been getting some questions on eBay about, or eBay? Jeez. Um, I've been getting some questions on uh, YouTube about the quality of them, and I'd like to address those concerns and give people some idea exactly what they're into with those scopes. Um, this here... Oh, crap. Can I even focus that? No, not really. This here is a... Um, be a sphinx moth. It's of the tomato worm and tobacco worm family in any case. We've been turning up a lot of these. I'm sorry the focus isn't very good. We've been turning up a lot of these dead in the parking lot at work lately. Must be their season to either hatch out or mate or something. I don't know. But anyway, they're big fellas. There's my fingers for comparison there. And when I found one laying dead on the asphalt, I decided he would be a really good sampler for uh, microscope work. Something I don't know how many people really know, but moths and butterflies have protective wing scales. Any child who has handled a butterfly or mishandled a butterfly or a moth of any size um, knows that they get a colored dust on their fingers. This dust is protective scales that, um, how well you'll see, they resemble leaves actually under magnification. They're arranged on the wings like thousands upon thousands of little, uh, roof shingles and they give the wing protection from the elements. This is this is what I think I know anyway. Um okay well let's get down to it. What I've done is I've taken you can see I've cut the wing here. I took a sample of wing and put it on the microscope and uh, no cover glass, no mounting fluid, nothing. It's just laying there on the slide. And I also took a toothpick and brushed some scales off onto the slide for individual inspection. So let's go have a look, shall we? Very quickly, I'd like to give you an overview of the setup. This is an Amscope M600A. Um, it's been modified. You'll notice there's where the power cord used to be is now a big hole. And uh, I have added a DC power jack. And it has a battery uh, holder <laughs> coupled to it. On the other side, turn it around here. Uh, that, I think, is as was stock, if I recall correctly. And so is this, but now this is illuminated by white LED light. I converted it over myself, my own circuit board design. It runs on four AA batteries and produces more than sufficient light for uh, field observations, uh, laboratory observations. You can see the uh, light coming through the uh, condenser right there, very nice and bright works all the way up to maximum power very nicely. I'm very pleased with it. Uh, the light color is well, it's pretty pure white, maybe a touch of blue. I had to remove the uh, colored filter glass that compensates for the uh, yellowish cast of the uh, stock incandescent bulb that was in there produces almost no heat. There is some heat from uh, the regulator system that's in there to allow um, adjustable power output. See, works just like before. Um, 
So that generates a mild amount of heat, but not even... Oh god, it's probably like 2% of the heat output that it had with the incandescent lamp. I mean, it's very cold light. It's white LED light. It was a, a small uh, white LED flashlight that I tore apart and used the uh, LED from probably, I don't know, a watt or something like that. It does very nicely. Anyway, uh, moving on very quickly. This up here, you'll notice no eyepiece because it's laying here. Um, that is what used to be a Quick Cam Pro 9000. I modified that to do uh, microscope work with, as well as regular work. It will accept uh, normal webcam lenses. That's from a, that's from a, what was it, uh, Philips 2U Cam, however you say it. Uh, mm, shoot, SP. SPC900NC, I believe, is the model number from that webcam. I took the lens from that and I use it uh, for my own personal uses on the modified uh, quick cam. I built my own adapter for the microscope out of PVC pipe and used uh, the body of a webcam lens to do the actual mounting. And it's quite removable, works very well. Uh, I had to wind several layers of uh, electrical tape onto the eyepiece tube, which looks a little tacky maybe, but so what? I mean, it performs brilliantly, as you'll soon see. I have my sample on the slide there. You can't really see it, but uh, you'll just have to trust me. And let's move on to the scope real quick while there's time. Okay, um, first thing I want to say is, ever since I did the modification for the camera, um, I have used the monitor almost exclusively when doing any kind of work with the microscope. The reason being, it's just so much better. You're not restricted to hunching over an eyepiece. You're not uh, troubled by dust on the eyepiece glass obviously I've got dust on the CCD because it looks pretty filthy but uh, I forgot to clean that off and I'm already rolling so you're just gonna have to put up with it just like me um, I should have cleaned that up I'm sorry anyway um, you can you know relax look into this big monitor the detail seems better you don't have to worry about eye floaters interfering if you if you're familiar with microscope use they tend to bring out every little speck of dust in your eyes so let's roll huh this here first i want to show you the sample of moth wing and now when working with this, it's a little bit different from working with uh, eyepiece light. Uh, the, specifically, the field of view is different. Powers behave different. Um, the lighting on the stage behaves a bit different. So you have to train yourself to work with that a little bit. Um, let's fool with the condenser. That softens it out a little bit. I like that warm kind of glow, though. It's it's nice. It's a little over bright. My many apologies, but uh, very very pretty otherwise. I like. Oh, and this being cold light, you don't have to worry about infrared filtering on your camera because LEDs produce uh, white LEDs produce very very little infrared, so it's not a problem as far as color goes.